What's up guys, it's Project, back at it again with a min-max sword build I'm calling Nightblade. This is a very strong balanced sword build you can make with damage being priority, obviously, combining both EI and Night Rain in one build. The reason I'm doing that is because EI is kind of trash against yokai bosses, whereas Night Rain is more DPS overall since it has a way quicker animation. But of course, the opposite is also true. EI is more superior against humans than Night Rain, so the build has the best of both worlds. Before we start with the build, here's a starter build for your first playthrough. 3-piece Sinner and 4-piece from Gallant or another set, without Yasukani, gives you enough defense to be tanky, while the pair damage would provide more damage where it counts against bosses than, say, Kingo. 3-piece Sinner is from the 4th region, but requires 180k to cat proficiency, so make sure to use dual swords every now and again to meet the requirements. You can use 2-cat for normal play and then switch to sword for bosses till you can get a Yasukani. You will need to invest into stamina to wear the set and be agility however, so you will have to use a book of reincarnation later to transition to the final build. But the final build is for Kingo 3 Gallant. Now, let me emphasize very clearly, this is min-maxed. The damage done in Eclipse requires you to nearly have 1 to 1 stats like mine to achieve the same effect. Late game human bosses like Mataza have around 31 to 32k health, so just being even just a little bit worse loses you that one shot. And even then I have to spirit change tech to do that 31k damage. So this is an advanced build to make with little leeway for being undergeared, otherwise you're gonna have to do an extra hit or two to kill some bosses. But I do play with level sync on all the levels as you can see in the clips, so if you turn that off or you haven't beat New Game Plus yet, there's still hope for you dealing a similar damage output with lower level gear if you can get the rest of the stats right. Now, you can more easily one-shot people with EI if you go to Peace Profligate Sinner for the 40% pair damage. The problem with that is Sword sucks for general play. You rely so much on para when again, you're not really going to come close to 2 or even 3 shotting yokai bosses like Ryumin with EI, which makes that setup a worse option. So with 3 piece Gallant, I'm able to get Night Rain damage to make up for EI's suckiness against yokai bosses, and I also get a 4% melee damage boost for all my other skills and attacks for general combat. Sword excels at back damage due to its mystic art sort of execution, so Kingo is best choice. I don't go Tosa because Tosa is light armor. Can't reach 200 toughness with Gallant, less defense than Kingo, and being limited to one skill per stance is not something I'd recommend for Sword. It really needs all the tools you can get to be consistent with other weapons in Endgame. The main weapon is Ishida, slightly more base attack than Atagi. If using level sync, you're gonna need a plus 10 to deal similar damage, and the rest is standard stats you should be familiar with by now, attack bonus heart or skill either one, and make sure to remodel the sword to get A and B scaling in heart and skill. Range weapon, you want bestie westy and then golden boy. A agility on warrior the west, and then some utility stats like bow speed up and whatnot. The bow is going to be important for this build so make sure to get similar stats. 7 stats is from inheritables. Armor, pretty typical by now, attack on each piece from gold inheritables, EI skill damage from white inheritables, just revenant trade to get them. Unfortunately, skills with a set bonus like Night Rain don't have inheritables, hence we go EI. Once again, min-max damage needs these inheritables to one-shot human bosses with level sync on anyways. Keep in mind that you'll have to forge this armor to lower the stats needed to wear it to save points. Kingo Tex is from Deidara and Gallant is from Atake and possibly Shuten as well. Make sure to have Gallant for gloves and boots. If you forge the other pieces, you'll weigh more and have to invest more into stamina. On chest, you want life recovery and ritter absorption, and the rest is up to you. Running speed on boots and waist for Sonic, as well as life, luck, and purple stats like faster winded recovery. Pretty standard, pretty irrelevant. Accessories! I rock two Yasas for the life recovery and absorption. But one Yasa is fine with something else like a prayer bead for 1% more damage against Yokai, or Tikichiro's Gourd for life recovery when critical, which is useful if you use Night Rain on normal enemies to get back to a safer life pool after killing them. And then you want para accumulation and damage on both, and the rest is up to you. 
Stats, I'm almost 300 now, almost there, which is the max cap at the moment. But damage gains stop around level 200 after hitting 99 heart and then summon to skill. And level sync lowers my attack by nearly 500. As you can see, my attack here is 2300, whereas in Eclipse, it's mostly 18 to 1900. So keep that in mind when seeing other people's videos and comparing damage, and keep that in mind when complaining about my level being too high. With my clips, you know exactly when I'm using sync and when I'm not. And the whole point to level sync is to de-level you to be more in line with the stage. I go 50 magic for a longer duration of weakness talisman and the other buffs. With 50 magic, it lasts around 3 to 10 seconds longer than the usual 20, so I might just go 50 for each build now as it's noticeably easier to capitalize on weakness talisman's duration, whereas if you had 20 to 30, you barely make it behind an enemy to get the damage boost in time. Stamina and Strength must be the stats shown for this next part, Guardian Spirits. Now here is where it gets a little bit more technical. Of course, best bird for attack boost and high stance when you absorb Amrita, but I actually use Bear as the secondary as well, and that's for Spirit Switch Tech. You absorb Amrita with Tengen for the buff, and then you swap to your secondary for its better damage passives. The Bear is the simplest damage boost compared to Wolf or Two-Headed Duck, which requires certain conditions that slow you down. With Bear, I Spirit Stone Tengen, switch to Bear, Spirit Stone again for passives to take effect, and then Para Arrow, and boom. With the wolf, you'll have to use Piranha to ground fire, which slows you down because you have to wait for the enemy to run to you and trigger it and then get paralyzed. And the duck, obviously you have to be in critical, which isn't really ideal for first encounters unless you use burning jars, which again, takes longer. So I chose bear. I found it necessary to do this to one shot the human guys. Without this, you'll be off by 1k or so damage, which again, disables you from one shotting Mataza. It might be unnecessary for the other humans like Nobunaga, but I'm just showing you guys new things each build video to consider or expand your knowledge. Likewise, doing this trick, you're gonna need double the spirit cores, as cores give you bonus attack, so you want as much attack from cores as you possibly can on both spirits on top of minor skill boost effects like Magatsu or Enki. However, I only do this trick for human bosses, so for Tengen, I just have better utility cores like Otake for faster killing Shibata or Gyuki for example, and then Bull to interrupt enemies' attacks in addition to decent damage. Just make sure to get attack stat on each core for maximum damage, and also max out the rank of each core. Clan, I go Honda for the stupid damage, and with life recovery and rid absorption, you can trigger the unscathed effect often having the damage of any hit that hits you at full life. Skills, Sword, Make two loadouts via skill customization. One with Rage and Strike on EI, and then another with Rage and Strike on Night Rain. 20% damage boost is too good to pass up, so you definitely want it. Sword of Execution Mystic Art on both. I like Flowing Shadow on High Stance with Reckless Slice, and then Key Pulse into Sword Celerity on Mid and Low Stance. Haze is my preferred parry, if I ever had to use it. Um, and get the backstab and key nodes and the rest into melee mastery. You get raging and reckless slice from the shifling and sam trees. The clips you saw show me using EI from the front, since EI has this special weird pass-through effect where its hit counts as backstab damage if you're close enough to the enemy. This is the same as it was in Neo 1, so don't waste time going around the back, just go in straight in from the front, you know what I mean? <laughs> This mostly just works on humans since they're small enough though, but bigger enemies and with Night Rain, you'll have to back chase for the boosted damage. Ninjutsu is where I'm changing things up. Two quick change, two tiger running, and now stun arrows. I find these superior to powder, ground fire, and even para shurikens as they seem to apply para super well, paralyzing most normal enemies in one arrow, and being bow means you can carry nearly 30 arrows in total, whereas Parashurikens are limited to like 6. Not only this, but being an arrow means you can headshot the boss, cast Weakness Talisman, and then shoot them again to paralyze them, so you have no fear of them blocking like you do with Shurikens. Overall, I think it's superior, so get some of those. I still take Medusa for certain bosses like Shibata or Gozuki, however, and Enlightenment for fast casting. Omnio, Carnage, Weakness, Luckbringer, Protection, and Extractions are your mains. And then because we have 50 magic, you have enough points to use for whatever else. Rejuvenation Talisman is my choice for the 4th for staying topped off in normal play. 
And that's the Nightblade build. I figured since Sword is mostly a one trick pony in Endgame, the slightly longer setups kind of make sense to go with it. Unfortunately, the new skills did nothing to expand its endgame potential. True and Through is more like True and Trash. It's much worse than both EI and Night Rain, even after the so called buff. Being 30% worse than the other skills after the patch, and it's a secret skill you have to farm, is not something I would call balancing. But I digress. Overall, while the one shots are tasty, I do think Sword is a little bit too limited. Other weapons are just better overall, or rather, they have better skills to build around than Sword. And they require less setup to kill in the same amount of time you would with Sword. But, what do you guys think of the build, and for that matter, what do you guys think of Sword in Endgame? Yay or nay? Let me know in the comments, the next build will likely be Odachi, and then Axe or Tanfa afterwards. And the other weapons might have to wait till DLC. We'll see. Spear does look tasty. I will admit that. Anyways, you guys know the jig, smash that like button, join the channel, and subscribe for more Neo 2 epicness.